Kind of looks like Herbert the pervert's dog from Family Guy, but reincarnated as a go-kart. Hello, people of the internet. Welcome. Welcome to another video where I work on a go-kart. In today's installment of working on a go-kart, I'm going to scratch my kneecap. This is said go-kart in question, and these are my freshly done nails. How cute is that? Has nothing to do with the go-kart though. If you're new, that go-kart right there up above is a link to the last video where I worked on said go-kart. This is a bar. There's three of these that I need to paint a different color than the blue I did on the frame. So we're not gonna blab, we're gonna get straight to work. And by me, I mean myself. And I guess if these things are beings, then they count too. <laughs> bars are prepped and ready to go. I had a MIG weld uh, crack on one of the side bars and one of them was full of rust so I used some purple power and a uh, red scotch bright pad and I got 90% of the rust off. So yeah they're prepped in 120 grit ready to go. Take these things out of this bucket of bender urine. Hell yeah those look brand new. I'm very happy that I put all the time and effort into cleaning these up only to realize that they are janky haggard piles of trash and I need to replace them. I don't think you necessarily have to be good at math to tell that there is a massive difference between the left and the right side. These should be identical. There's no reason for these to be different. And also this one is pretty well bent. The other side is not. One of them has a crack in it that I just realized as I stick it in front of my face right now. Yeah, these are trash. I gotta order a set. They'll go back on the cart as is just solely so I have a means of assembling this thing, but as soon as the new ones come in the mail, mm, yep, yeah, gone. It's time to push some cars out of the booth because I'm gonna paint. Oh, that's cute. The Miatas are kissing. How adorable. This part is so important. Wax and grease remover. That's after going over everything twice and then still comes up with dirt. So I'm gonna do it two more times until I can go over those bars and I get nothing on this cloth. I'm gonna what? Get over spray all over your camera. I'm gonna move it out. It's time to paint. So I'm gonna stick you outside the booth and time lapse, because I don't want this camera anywhere near this stuff. marks all over my face but I'd rather have that than have shit in my lungs so I guess that's a fair trade-off and uh, this was kind of tricky spraying white on something this small diameter is really easy to get runs and I found it difficult to really gauge how thick my coats were because it is white and this whole room is white so I was playing games with my eyes but all in all, not bad. I got a run or two here and there, but the bars are wavy and ripply in some areas, so it kind of just, you can't even tell. Hello and welcome to tomorrow. I gotta do something with these spindles for now until I can find a new set, because this is a weird design. I guess modern go-karts don't use this style anymore from what I can see. From everything I can tell, it looks like newer go-karts use a bearing on the spindle versus a bearing on the frame of the cart. So, I don't know. 
I'll just paint these up for now and there'll be a temporary solution until I can find something better. I'm gonna let these things cure in the sun for a good couple of hours before I go to try to put them on the go-kart. I just discovered two things. Uh, first of which is this is actually Plasti Dip and it's peeling right off, nice and easy. The second of which is this go-kart's actually older than I might think it is because I looked up the chassis number on the side, it's EX1163 and according to this website I just looked up, EX designates that this go-kart was manufactured from 73 to 88. When I bought it, it said 1997 on the listing. So I don't know what year this thing is. Let me know in the comment section below if you are an Emic expert and you can identify this frame because I'm struggling. These spindles have adjustability in them and as Kind of confusing, I'm not gonna lie. I think because these things are mounted at an angle, there has to be a bushing or a threaded portion that's supposed to be down here on the bottom. I don't think it'll affect caster. Or does it affect, no. I'm I'm so lost with how these are supposed to work. Oh, I wanna pound some bearings out. This part is simple. Remove crusty old bearings, insert new ones. There goes that bearing. You can't hear it, but it feels crusty. It's like <laughs> Box of bearings. Obviously, I'm gonna clean every single component before I put it back on there, especially these wheels, because I got a bunch of red over spray spray paint on them. See? Red overspray. What's that, Baxter? You ate the entire wheel of cheese and pooped in the refrigerator? No, I'm not mad. I'm impressed. Go-karts and Peugeots, they share something in common. At least the Peugeot 106 and the Citroen Saxo. Hello and welcome to a continuing day saga of go-kart. Here you go, fabric cobbler. Thank you. So the plan to get the go-karts spindles mounted correctly is Charlie is going to drill a hole through the center of a bolt to create a thing. All this is, is a bolt with like a long shaft and a lock nut. And the other side has to be the same size thread with a hole through it to receive the kingpin. Hmm. I mean, the original one might have been eccentric so that you could like, but. So this shaft is gonna slide through the center of the bolt. Mm -hmm. So in essence, you are creating this bottom portion right here out of this bolt. So right. that way this will lock the two halves together into the spindle. Correct. I went to the hardware store this morning and I was trying to find maybe like a piece of pipe fitting or something that would slide the bolt through the center into the bottom, but nothing like that exists. So, Mr. I can fix things and make things out of metal here had the solution. How difficult is it to bore through a grade five bolt? Not. Oh, really? It'll cut through that like butter? It'll go pretty easy. There you go. That's the bolt right there, it's drilled out. The only thing is, I'm gonna have to cut it shorter and there's no way of knowing that without having the go-kart here. Problem solved. I'm back with the parts. Try this out. The tricky part is this threaded body has to only contact the center of the bearing or else the bearing will not rotate, which it does, so that's good. Just like that. Look at that. No wobble or play. Hey, there's a rock stuck inside that hole. That's gonna bother me. That's good. Okay, so now I gotta cut this down shorter. Basically, I still wanna be able to slide a cotter key through the bottom of the kingpin. So I need to just cut this down. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, how many threads do I got on this? One, two, three, four, five threads. These were the old tie rods that were on the go-kart and they were too short 
which meant this thing was permanently towed out and these things had like two threads uh, of the heim joint threaded into the rod. So I got some new ones. These ones are 290 mil and you can see the 290s are quite a bit longer. So the tricky part's gonna be is the fact that this is a heim joint. I'm gonna have to put some tiny washers that space this out so that way I still have room for this thing to flex just like this. Tiny copper crush washers. The nose is back together and kind of looks like Herbert the pervert's dog from Family Guy but reincarnated as a go-kart. I don't I don't know why. It's cuz the back tires. I guess. Anyway, the front end's done and I got the white bar on there so you can start to get an idea of what this is going to look like. I should probably just shut up and get it all the way together, huh? I wanted to put the engine on today, but I don't have the motor mount for it. It hasn't come in the mail yet. It was supposed to be here today, but it didn't. I'm so glad I remember the correct direction and orientation of all these parts on the rear axle and being really sarcastic right now. This is going to take a while. Good thing I got my old footage that I can use as a schematic. So it looks like the bearing carrier faces in, the rear sprocket faces in. I crave a good illustrated parts breakdown. I wish I had a TO for this go-kart. That made somebody laugh. Ready? Let's see if it'll work. Magic. Magic. Magic? Magic. 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 I probably should have assembled this axle as a whole unit and put it in that way because that's how I took it apart, but I like to make my life difficult, so this is happening. Loosen these up. Yeah, this goes this way. Brake rotor faces in, I think. I ordered some new lock colors for the rear axle and they look like Bubbles glasses from Trailer Park Boys. I forgot, I gotta measure the ends of my axle first. A ax oh, axle, axle, 155 millimeters, we'll go with that. This axle stub is 151 millimeters. So, 153 and a half millimeters. Exactly the same on both sides. It's funny locking these collars down onto the axle because before when I was driving it around, it had none of that. So it was just slopping around doing whatever it wanted to. I'm sure that was safe. The rear axle spins nice and smooth now, but the crappy part is my brake rotor is warped. Yep, sprocket's warped too. Awesome, so I need a new sprocket and a brake rotor. I guess there was nothing useful on this whole go-kart. How hot, hot, hot. Let's try not to get this in the eye. Rotation this way. Somebody mounted the tires backwards, one of the tires backwards, because they both have the arrow facing the same way. Is the wheel bent? I think it's the tire more than the wheel. So basically, <laughs> the only thing that was useful on this go-kart when I bought it was the frame that I restored and the brake master cylinder and the caliper and the steering column that I had to use a die on because it, it was cross-threaded. So basically, it was $750 for a used frame and some bent wheels. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Check this out, ready? Look how easy this thing rolls now. That's got fresh bearings. What is that noise? Forget about the squeak. See how easy it rolls now though? Cause it's got fresh bearings. I really wanted to get the engine mounted up in this video but the engine mount bracket never got here and I still have to fabricate a front seat bracket, bracket and mount the throttle cable. Other than that, this thing's done just for a couple more things to go. I can't wait. This is awesome. And yes, I turned the steering wheel the other way around. I'm an idiot. This was completely unintentional, but the sticker logos inside the wheels actually match the color theme. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but 
it's this guy right here and I actually ordered a new one of these. So problem solved. Well, I'm gonna wrap this video up and I think the next one on the go-kart should be the first drive and project complete, I would think, as long as all the parts are here. And then start working on something else maybe. I don't I don't know if I work on the TT yet. I have that's a, that's another thing. I just yeah. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.